how this one's going to pan out with IG. On the blue side, they of course immediately lock in that Olaf that we've seen a million times before. Uh, it's going to be answered by the Gragas and the Kaiser on the side of OMG. Yeah, so there is the option here to go back towards the Zai if you want to for Wink. Um, look good in the last game, and uh, I think you can do a lot with that, but might get a different style as it actually is going to be the Samira. So expect, I was going to say, the Railer, the Alistair to be locked in here, and instantly Lucas is like, no, I want the Rail. She's so damn good. That CC lock and the damage that she can set up for the Samira is absolutely insane. So I like IG already securing a strong bot side. Ude going to be the answer, though, for Aki. We said we wanted a ganking jungler. Ude is mm. certainly good at ganking them lanes. So taking some boxes for the side of OMG. Look toward the fans then, Dagda. What are you expecting OMG to try and pitch? I think overall you probably have OMG look towards the um, the top plane here. You've already got the Gragas locked in towards uh, Elida in the top lane. You can start to get rid of some of these more annoying picks, especially when you're against the Shy. You know he's going to bring out some crazy picks, but actually not going to be the case. They are just going to look towards Rookie and probably take something like the Oriana on this first rotation for Wooming. Ban away the Syndra here alongside that Twisted Fate and just set up Wooming so he's in a nice, easy to manage lane state. Yeah, remember last time they had that Oriana, they banned the Azir. They're going to do it again. Azir, Twisted Fate, these two bans. So saying basically we're okay with Rookie playing that Syndra versus Oriana matchup. Assuming that those are the two mid laners we get to see them through. IG on the opposite side though, banning the Alistair. You'd expect them to ban maybe another hard engaged spot, maybe something like Probably that Leona, fresh. just to make it a bit oh. harder. In fact, no, go for the Camille instead. So I honestly thought they'd go for the Thresh. I mean, you could see in the last game how good Thresh is against Rel. The Flay prevents all sort of engages. You can reposition people, which makes it really hard for Rel to deal with. And even the hooks kind of lock her down in a lot of situations. And without the shield, Rel's relatively squishy. So certainly if you can interrupt that and get Rel, you can close her out very, very quickly. But we'll have to see what the plan is going to be. We mean though, getting that Oriana that we talked about. So expect Rookie to go back towards the Syndra. I think it works so well with the composition they have. More engage, more damage. This burst orientated as well that just sets up so well for this Samira. But we'll have to see if that's the decision here. We'll see where IG go with this one. Hovering a rumble right now, and it is going to be oh. locked in. That could be for the Shy top lane, honestly. It's kind of a classic the Shy pick. We'll see what Rookie wants to go for. I don't really think of Rookie when I think of rumble, to be honest. No, and I agree with you. I think that is going towards the shy. We'll get guarantee here when we get this last lock in. But as you're saying, like, Rookie can, I would assume, play the Rumble and can play these more uh, roam oriented styles. But certainly I prefer him if he is going to go that Rome style on the Twist of Fate or something like this Galio. And Galio works incredibly well with the Samira as well. So you've got a very potent team fight combo set up here from Invictus Gaming, where you've got the, the Equalizer with the, the Inferno Trigger in towards this heroic entrance just to keep everyone locked up and damage dealt consistently from IG. So expect an explosive mid game from IG, looking to pair off of the strong lane matchups that they have right now. Or the Leona that we talked about as a potential ban will be the final lock-in for OMG. So when you have a very aggressive 2v2 on the bottom side of the map, the Rel Samira versus Leona Kaiser, huge amount of snowball potential on both sides as well. Feels like that's going to be somewhat of a skill match in the first couple of 2v2s, dependent on whether junglers come in, who gets level 2 first, etc, etc. But then if you manage to get a kill early there, it's going to get out of control in either direction. But this is where I like what IG have done, right? Because you've got, okay, both Shun and Aki, in theory, playing down towards this bottom lane. But in an isolated 1v1, that Rumble's going to do a lot of work against this Gragas in the top side of the map. So you give that strength over towards the Shy. And this is something that uh, IG do a lot, where they'll have very clear win conditions. And then you think, oh, sorry, very strong lane that you expect them to play around. And that the opposing team needs to put attention towards. And then they'll just stick the Shy into this really good matchup, not a traditional weak side top, and he'll just bully the opposing laner out. We've seen it with the Quins, we've seen it with the Callistas, and he'll just, in that 1v1, get a massive lead for himself. I mean, it's exactly what he's known for. It's one of the things that we highlighted when he was playing up against Nuggery earlier on in the week as well, that his individual CSD, his individual gold lead at 15, 
is always astonishing. It's going to be up in that top side on his classic rumble pick. And he's, you can see the comet that he's bringing as well because he wants to dominate that lane. In the mid lane, though, Rookie's bringing the Galio and he's rocking the Predator. Rookie wants to get out of the mid lane. He wants to get out onto the map and dominate. OMG, it's what we saw in game number one. We'll see if it's what we see as we head into game number two. And this is the IG that I'm the biggest fan of when we have Rookie on something that he can go for these roaming plays on because he just, he understands his matchup so well and how he can make that happen. But top side, the shy, in a lot of trouble here. Will be knocked up. Not a huge amount of damage to come through just yet. He is trying to hold on to the flash. He wants to just walk away from this one. And it looks like he's going to be all right. The shy, cool, calm, composed. No need to use summoners. He'll just waddle out. Information, though, is going to be given to both sides. You can see here already, OMG now got a ward on top side as to where they're going to start. I actually thought Wink was going to move in towards this bottom side to try and get a ward of his own, but it looks like they won't actually get full information from IGE side. So again, Aki, at least now, can have an idea of where Shun's going to start, and maybe Eric and Cole might need to play a little bit safe on this bottom side since you can see Shun is going to be starting top lane. OMG going to be trying to take flight on the top half of the map here because you can see three phase rushes, so many wings to work with. They'll be speeding around the map as IG start on this top side. Aki is going to start on this bottom side of the map though. He begins with his blue buff, which means he could path up towards that top lane and maybe look for an early gank onto the shot. Yeah, especially when we saw that level one play prioritizing the shy trying to see if they could burn that flash i have a feeling that the idea here is trying to punish the shy on what is a in theory for ig a weak side top and um, so we'll have to see if they're going to be able to make that happen already though alila like, taken a couple of bad trades and this may give the shy the opportunity here to just push this wave in aki needs to be very quick on how fast he can get up towards this top side and actually get there before the shy bounces that wave back who did definitely quick at clearing through the jungle and getting into those lanes. But a lot of pressure on Aki, not just in this game, but in the entire series. We talked about that jungle matchup being very much a matter of these two LDL junglers stepping on up. Aki previously on the top esports LDL team. Shun was on the IG LDL team that won the 2020 summer playoffs for LDL. So Shun definitely coming in as the favorite jungler, but Aki training under players like XX and like Karsa certainly has plenty of talent that he's been able to learn from across the last couple of years. Is Cole going to get knocked up, pulled back in, stunned up and forced to flash out of the play? Once again, beautiful play from the IG bottom lane as the Shy happy to take a 2v1, happy to soak pressure, We're... cost him his flash. We might get a four-man bot though. Cold. Has already burnt his flash. He's super low. Rookie has this push in mid. Shun now starting to wrap behind. Here comes the four-man play. Yeah, you can see Rookie moving on the map. Shun's coming in as well. I think OMG just quickly realizing what's going on as Eric and Cold considering just backing off entirely. Shun and Rookie, they're just waiting for this OMG squad to commit to the tower. They do. Cold goes in. Stun comes in. Teleport as well, but Rookie's already got the kill. Eric's about to go down as well before Wooming even arrives. Does survive for now. And I like teleported, but on no HP whatsoever. Oh, and now no. there's all five of them. IG, no mercy in their eyes. Eric falls. He's burnt to a crisp by the flame splitter. In go the winds of war. Here comes the damage and not a single casualty on the side of IG. Oh, God, it's a disaster for OMG. Sanka, the dead man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> they did. Oh, God. It's actually, like, so we could see this a mile away, right? Rookie had already had that full push in towards the mid lane. You've just burnt that flash very well by Wink and Lucas on towards Cold in the bottom lane. You just need to give it up. You just need to back away. You don't commit more people, and especially Alila, who's just been barbecued as he TPs down to that bottom lane. Like, this was a disaster from OMG. And now Rookie mid. Yeah, Rookie gonna be able to get himself the perfect chain there. Just forces the flash out of Wooming. The Shy can't follow up on it. As the Shy has decided he's the mid laner now. Uh, he's gonna be able to clear this humongous mid wave. It gives Rookie an opportunity to head back to base. I wonder if they're actually going to fully lane swap or if the Shy's just soaking away. 
No, I think it's just soaking the wave at the moment, but look, we're going to get a repeat here. Like, Eric and Cold, you need to get away from this. You are not getting enough damage. You can see here, the shy barbecues a Lila on the way down. So he comes in with no HP. Probably very confused. You can see there as he tries to go aggressive when he walks in. I was like, wait a second, I have got no health left. <laughs> and from this point forward, you're done for. Like... What are you hoping? Oh, There's nothing. God. There's nothing that's going to go well. They know they're dead. It's just over. I, the kill on Eric from the Shy is like really the, the cherry on the cake on that one. Where the Shy literally just harpoons him, turns on the flamethrower, and just stands there. Just watches it burn, and Eric's like, well, I, I guess I'll die. <laughs> there's, there's not much you can do at that point. Yeah. It's like, I can go this way and die, or I can go this way and die. Doesn't matter. He basically just gave up. Uh, and, I mean, you can already see as well, like, off the back of this rookie, he's got his Ionian boots. He's going to have his, uh, or his ultimate up very quickly. He's going to have... Oh. Presence in this bottom side, alongside yeah, Shun, Lucas but not flash forward there, but didn't actually find anything. Cold has to sacrifice himself to save Eric here. Had no way out. With Shun ganking onto this bottom side. That's going to open up the Dragon, though. First Drake of the game, and IG in commanding position to take it. And you know what's a really good champion when ahead? Samira. <laughs> so yeah. you got Wink with two kills already. A bunch of turret plates, dragons going that way as well. Wink is set up for success. And not only that, the competition, or the composition's pretty much built around him. Like, Rookie giving him all those defensive stats with the ultimate. Lucas giving him a bunch of defensive stats. Like, it's impossible to kill Wink if he gets the ball rolling like this. Aki is... Oh, no. <laughs> Aki is spotted, is what he is. We saw a little replay in the picture-in-picture picture of Aki clearing some jungle camps, trying to punish, but... The Shy now in a 2v1. I mean, this is just disrespectful from the Shy. He knew they were there. Yeah. He just spotted him on a Scryer's Orb. I, I, I don't know what he expected. <laughs> There's no other way that was going to go. Look, everyone knows that Gragas and Udyr don't have any CC. Like, he, he just needed to walk out, but he clearly thought he could take the fight. And that was the problem, you know? Yeah, I mean, that was just... Uh, that was just the shy. Doing the shy things. I don't know why the shy was even mid in the first place, because the bot play had already happened. Yeah. The Drake was already definitely going their way. Aki was already definitely top side. Uh, but anyway, we've got a 2v2 here. Cold goes in onto Lucas. But this is not a 2v2 that they can win, because Wink is already absolutely massive. He's just going to keep on autoing. There's no way out of this fight. It's already happened. The stun onto Wink stops the all in, but even still. Yeah, Cold, I'm not sure why he's uh, trying to force the 2v2 because it's just never going to work. Rookie now wants to punish Aki. He's like, look, mate, you killed the Shy, and the Shy is my friend. Into the jungle they go. Shun grabs the kill as a Lilite looks for a way out. But unfortunately, there are IG members in every direction. Flash over the wall here from a Lilite. Gets underneath the tower, but I don't think the tower can save you, my friend. <laughs> under they go ig have already shown that they love to dive towers this game another kill goes their way the shy happy to tank that one up as wooming oh, now no. arrives a new contender oh, approaches no. but he's onto the red carpet he's burning down good shockwave comes through but rookies close the gap he's found a knock up for himself taunt on cooldown though finally we'll be able to get that one down the shy is low the shun should be able to chase this down finish off the kill onto wooming and aki arrived and he was like look i could go in but I might just die again. Yeah. So maybe not this time. So I think what OMG need to do is learn about a concept. It's called the sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> if you've already lost everything, you don't need to invest more to make it work. It's like, imagine you'd invest in Dogecoin before Elon Musk tweeted about it today. <laughs> the second he tweets about it, you're gone. It's done. You just got to sell a Dogecoin and just give it up. It's done. You're going to lose all your money. And OMG, right now, they've they've held on to Dogecoin. It's not looking pretty for them. <laughs> and now, coming up to 10 minutes into the game, they're almost 4,000 gold behind. They're trying to start this Rift Tail, but I have a feeling IG, they're going to want to try and scrap for that. I mean, IG just want to fight. Look at the scores. It doesn't even matter what the objective is. It doesn't matter where they are. Aki is doomed. I don't, this is not your Rift Herald. This is not your Summoner's Rift. Where, where are you going, Aki? Where are you going, Wooming? You don't get to leave. Rookie just going to 1v3 right now as Lucas finally arrives. In fact, he's going to get 
3v1 is a better way to describe that. Rookie went down. I'm getting a little too excited. I believe in IG can pull anything off. <laughs> Look, at this stage, they pretty much can, right? You're, you're 4,000 gold at 10 minutes. You're going to have these first items coming through. Even though the Alila actually does have a lead in this top lane, like... He's not going to be able to carry. Oh, actually, he doesn't even anymore. He did have a lead up until about two minutes ago. So that just says how out of control this game has suddenly got for IG. Eric will be able to at least get a kill. Which, you know, when you're just cheering about one kill for the AD carry, that's, uh, that's a bad sign already. But hey, at least Eric has something to work with. He's got himself a serrated Dirk. So obviously couldn't afford a Noon Quiver when he recalled. And now into the mid lane we go, as Wooming dies. Um, I believe that's his hat trick when it comes to deaths this game. Mm. They should be able to finish this mid tower off on the next wave, because they've got a Herald as well. Dagda. I don't know, I feel <laughs> like we should talk about something else. Because, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, I feel um, like talking about OMG here, at this point, is just kind of insensitive to OMG yeah. fans. Yeah, I felt... I feel like our whole segment of let's give them hope, let's... You know, let's give them maybe. Maybe they can do it. Maybe they stand a chance. It's just like... No! <laughs> IG are currently 3-3, three and three, and they've decided, you know what? We really, really want to make sure we're on a positive scoreline before we go into Chinese New Year, and they're doing a pretty good job of showing it right now. Yeah, I mean... Let's be honest, coming into this one, IG very high up the standings, OMG not so much. This was the way that you expect this series to go. Um, but I just want to uh, move on the conversation a little bit here because IG almost on a kill a minute so far. OMG will be able to get a bit of pressure onto this top tower. Um, but I watched a movie last night, Dagda. It was called Next. Okay. And uh, oh. starring <laughs> Nicolas Cage. Who, okay. I will say, just in case anyone does like Nicolas Cage out there, I'm so sorry um, about your lack of ability to critically think. Um, but oh, you're hitting I discovered, the episode. I discovered last <laughs> night, because I, I couldn't work it out, right? I was watching this film, and he is mm. very terrible, uh, as is often the case with Nicolas Cage films. And I discovered that he is the nephew of the guy that directed The Godfather and The Godfather 2. Which suddenly it all makes sense as to how he became a successful actor without the ability to act. So you've reminded me of this community. I recently rewatched Community, and there's an oh, entire yeah. episode where Abbott loses his mind because he enrolls in a class that is about is Nicolas Cage a good actor? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> yeah. Oh what? I lied. I like, no! He missed everything. Ugh. Oh god. Tell me he doesn't die. Please just run. Flee. <laughs> oh, this is just getting worse. I, honestly, <laughs> I love the LPL. I love how great the top teams are, but I don't know. We we have some uh, <laughs> tough recovered. ones. The Shy. It's okay. I mean, yeah, let, let's just say that this was really good by OMG. Punishing the Shy for his mistakes. Reading the play perfectly. Amazing stuff here from OMG. <laughs> They got it. They got, they got themselves on the board. Yeah. Woo. See, I can't go I that. My voice believe. is struggling a bit. I've done a, a lot of casting over the last while, a lot of podcasts and LPL casts and trivia shows and mm -hmm. everything else. So mm -hmm. my voice is struggling to hit those high notes, notes right now. I feel like I'm back in puberty with my voice just cracking every so often. Right. Your, your voice sounds beautiful to me. Tell me about this, this class you. about Nick Cage. I want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> I think basically they left it on a, a cliffhanger because they're like, we don't want to just like ruin this. But Abbott essentially loses his mind where he's just not able to figure out if he's actually a good actor or if he's just like ter absolutely terrible. I, I like that you are like firmly on the side, though, that he's a terrible, terrible actor. Oh, no, I didn't even see that on the scoreboard. A Lilai died to the tower yeah. and now the rest oh, of God. OMG are going to die as well. Aki's caught out. The rest of them just flee for their lives. In goes Cold, who isn't afraid of anything because he's got Eric alongside him. Rookie's going to go down here. Beautifully done by OMG. One for one. We take those here. Still a 6,000 gold lead in favor of IG. And you know what, IG? They don't care if they're outnumbered. They're still going to go for this fight. Alilai trying to be the one to force the engage. The Shy is currently silenced. 
We'll be able to turn this one around at least a little bit here. The shy knockback taken down. Another advantage for OMG. Things are starting to look good, Dagda. Okay, okay. They're starting to bring some things back. I mean, nice. They're able to get two picks. I want to see if they can turn this into any sort of objective. But honestly, I mean, look at topside. Two big waves crashing in towards our top turret. And bot side as well. Waves not really in position. No dragons up either. So they'll just kind of have to settle for a few of these kills. But still... It's a 6,000 gold lead, and as much as IG are kind of doing IG things, I really don't see this heavily turning back in the favor of OMG. Um, yeah, I agree with you. And I just want to... But anyway... I'll, I'll, sorry, go on. I was going to say, speaking of actors that are terrible, uh, I was slightly hungover and went back and watched Spirit's Stallion of the Cimarron the other day. Great movie. <laughs> but Matt Damon should never be allowed to voice act. My God, oh, really? I did not realize how terrible that was. Although, would you, would you say that he's a rookie? Because rookie's been caught <laughs> out right now. Uh, I'd say that. Maybe he caught them because he's baited them all into it. Beautiful <laughs> combo from Lucas. And Aki thought he'd escaped, but Wink was just waiting for him. He's a bear hunter. Brings him down with the blade whirl. It's already two drakes for IG. The next one's up in a minute, but I'm not even sure they need drakes, to be quite honest. I think the game is going to end long before any souls come on through. Yeah, and that roller coaster of emotions was very similar to my opening scene in Spirit. Because what happened mm. was, I heard Matt Damon come on, and I was like, God, this is going to ruin the entire movie for me. This guy is atrocious. There's just no emphasis in his voice. It's just the monotone, boring, and everything that should be emotional is just said with complete deadpan. Then I realized they actually just don't use him for like 90% of the movie. He was clearly just brought in to get bums in seats. And then they just let the uh, the animation do the rest of the talking. And then I enjoyed the movie. But every time Matt Damon came on, I cried a little bit. And that's very similar to what OMG are feeling after that bot lane play. I see, I see. I will say, yeah. I'm a huge Matt Damon stan. Like, you can't say anything Wait, to Wait, how are you a fan of Matt Damon, Damon and you hate Nick Cage? Like, because I feel Matt like Damon you're kind of in, in the same films. boat there. Matt Damon okay, is in okay, good films, yeah. generally speaking. And also, Matt Damon's, like, in the right role, Matt Damon's a good actor. You just got I just always role, think right? of He's Matt Damon one dimensional. Right? Team America. <laughs> Do you know, you can't really tell that story properly without it being offensive because it's about Team America. But the whole the whole reason that Matt Damon is the way he is in that film is because the puppet that they ordered for him just was made incorrectly. There was a problem with the face on it, so they just rolled with it, and that became the entire character. Um, Amazing. Here we go. IG looking for a fight as uh, Cold going to be pulled in. Look at the Wombo combo. Cold doesn't get to play League of Legends anymore. Eli like dashes on out as Wooming's chased down. Shun is just going in. 1v3 here. Not nice back by the Gragas, but he's got a shield for himself. Oh, it's the Shockwave, sorry. Uh, as the Shy, just 1v1 in the Lila. Off to the other, the other side of the fight. IG once again, just going to brute force their way onto the map. They'd love to just turn and do Baron here if it was up yet, but it's only 18 minutes into the game. Yeah, and I mean... These are really All nice right. plays from OMG, but Hang they're on. too far behind. They're, they're starting more. They're trying to find more for this one. Alilite <laughs> does knock Lucas slightly sideways as he walks away from the fray. God Wink now does. looking for an opportunity to go in with this Inferno trigger. He doesn't even need to ult right now. He's just quite happily wailing away with these auto attacks. And it feels like OMG really want to fight this, but they just, they're just a little bit scared to go for it. And I can't say I'm this. <clears throat> does this uh, fight in boxing that happens and there's two massive dudes who come on and i can't i think it's called like slug it's basically what like slug fest came from where they just stand in the ring opposite each other and just keep throwing haymakers they just keep slinging and firing these punches at each other and looking at that fight that's all that that felt like it was just like everyone tossing everything that they got at each other but both of them somehow still remain standing for a long time so very juice to omg because when you're seven thousand gold behind to be able to take punches and still stay standing is fantastic. The problem is, you're on a timer. Three minutes until this next dragon. Baron is up in 20 seconds, and I know it's still 20 minutes into the game, but with how far ahead this Samira is, and the damage that this Olaf will be able to do, they can start this at any point in time. So what's the game plan here for OMG? If we just be serious for a second here, 
Is there anything See. that OMG can do? Uh, like, get, lay out the miracle scenario for me, Dagdell, where OMG somehow comes back and wins this game. So, what they do is, Eric picks Shun before yep. Baron comes, before they go to Baron. They manage to get all that 700 shutdown gold on towards Eric. Um, then he becomes absolutely monstrous. They then they pick off slam Herald bar. Wink as well. So they pick off Shun and Wink. All that gold just goes into Wooming and Eric. Then they're able to get Baron by some miracle because they're all completely survive and there's just not really any damage left from IG. Then they just hold, stall the game, get towards super late game where this Kraken Slayer Kais is online. You got three items on towards Wooming. Uh, Alila is going to be in a reasonably good spot as going tank Gragas as well. Maybe, maybe then... Uh, if you can find like two, three more decent fights and you can stop them getting this next dragon, then OMG are good. Other than that, right. it's not looking good, is it? Well, the shy, no. nice little flash there away from Alili. And uh, if, right, so if that does all come to pass, if we legitimately get to see OMG somehow find this pick uh, onto Shun find the snowball off of it, get a Baron, stall out, win in the late game. Yeah. Tweet at Dagda, call him a prophet. I don't think it's going to happen, <laughs> though. And I want to highlight one of the picks that's been doing real well in this game. And that's Shun on this Olaf. Now, if you cast your minds back to the IG versus FPX game that happened just the other day, Bo was the guy that had Olaf. Both games. And he absolutely dominated Shun. I'm starting to think maybe it wasn't so much about Bo versus Shun, and maybe it was more about who gets Olaf. And speaking of, Eric is getting Olaf right now, right in the face, as he's just cut down with no counterplay available. Now, <laughs> Alilai just gets chased under the tower. What can you do against this Viking? What can man do against such reckless hate? <laughs> and I think you hit the nail on the head there. Like, Shun, in a decent matchup, where the lanes are actually going to do okay from looks fine gaming or uh, shunning game two against fpx where he's on kindred against olaf and every lane is losing that ain't gonna look so good so it's nice to see what shun is capable of when he's actually set up to succeed not just left out to dry honestly by ig now lucas once again has found an engage he's onto wooming this time the shy knocked slightly by the shockwave that did literally no damage and it's an easy double kill for Wink. Onto the Baron to go. There's a TP being channeled, but there's a Galio, so you don't get to play the game, Alilai. <laughs> just tries to dash around the pit, tries to survive. Aki is desperate to run in and get this smite. IG's health bars are exceptionally low, but it doesn't matter. Shun's just going to chase him down. Baron is reset. As Shun goes <laughs> back Aki in, going? does he have the lifesteal for this? Aki's still surviving? This is... Just pure what chaos is going now. On? Eric is trying to get back in. Alila is over the wall. IG have restarted on this Baron. It's down to 2,000. The Shy is here. Alila throws in a barrel. Can he get the miracle? The answer is no. Shun grabs it. And IG, I mean, chaos is their element. This is their comfort zone. And hey, look, they're going to add a Menton Drake over as well because I, I could have seen OMG just foregoing Dragon, slowing down this Dragon. Or sorry. For going Baron, going over towards this dragon, trying to get one back for themselves and stopping this soul, but that's not an option right now. And you can already see IG, they've taken firm control of this jungle. They're going to have control of this river. They're going to try and pick off someone here with Rookie. Well, they're going to pick off Cold. They find the taunt, they find the rest of the CC. The damage isn't there just yet. Shockwave is going to try and protect the support, but it's not going to be enough. The Shun gets his 10th kill of the game it is 20 to 6 on the scoreboard a mountain soul is available on the map which would make me a liar doctor because i said that ig won't need a soul this game but whether they need it or not well, look it feels need rude and not want. to get it yeah there's needs and wants i don't think ig need the soul to win this game but i think they want the soul to win this game mm. it just makes it a little bit easier and honestly it kind of just shuts down any real hope of omg making a comeback the uh, pitiful damage that OMG are turning out right now going to go in mostly to those shields as well. Not going to help when uh, you really want to stall out this game as OMG. 
Yeah, and you know, some of the weaknesses of these kind of compositions where you have a Galio mid, you've got a low range AD carry, it, it can be quite difficult to get into the base and take down these inhib towers. But uh, Baron kind of makes a lot of those problems go away because the minions will do a lot of the work for you. You don't have to get into close to the tower yourself. And now IG, they can just set up this bot side, push in the mid wave at the same time as Alilo looks for a flank here, but the tower's already gone down. The inhib is about to fall as well. And I fear for Alilo's life, because I don't think Shun is afraid of that tower. Alilo <laughs> just slides out to the safety of his team. And now IG can collapse on the bottom side of the map. Rookie is just waiting for the correct ult, and here it is, on to three people. Easy CC for IG, and easy kills to boot. Another double kill comes through for Wink, as IG just absolutely style on OMG. It's almost every day of the week, because it is 24-6 on the scoreboard, and a commanding victory, 2-0 for IG.